Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very uh, famous chronograph like a Telda, which is like a, a cheaper brand if you want, but I found this chronograph looking very cool. I love the salmon or chocolatey dial. And uh, you see it's quite in rough shape, like the case is a bit faded. Um, yeah, the watch looks like it's working, but we see later on if it's working properly or no. Um, but basically what we try to do, we try to restore this watch and uh, bring it to, uh, for the second life. And uh, it's a watch that I will keep in my, um, in my collection because like I said, I found this dial so nice, so nice. So the chronograph is working. We're trying to reset it now. Yeah, perfect. And when I put it on a time grapher, just as to see if the watch is running properly, we see the amplitude is very low, 177, and it's losing like 80 seconds per day. So that's not really good. So this watch definitely need a, a service. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to remove everything. And to thanks all my subscribers, later on in a video, I will announce uh, how to enter the giveaway for Christmas. I will give one of my watch that I restore on the channel. So for now, I just remove the bracelet, which is quite easy because you see like the, the, locks are, the locks are drilled, so you have a hole. So it's very easy to remove the spring bar. And let's open the case back. See, this case back is a bit scratched as well. And now we have a beautiful chronograph. I love chronograph movement, like with these gold wheels. So this is a, a Venus uh, 188, so which is a, a very, very common uh, chronograph movement if you want from the 70s or, or, or before. Um, but yeah, it's like very robust, very, you can find a lot of parts for this movement. So that's nice to work on one of these. So now we're gonna take the movement out of the case by releasing these two screws on the side. We are going to remove the winding stem. And uh, on this watch, basically the, the dial and the mechanism is coming from the front. So I need to remove the bezel there again with my uh, sharp blade for my, for my tools for, for opening case back. And that's it, you see I lift and now I should be able to remove the movement with the dial. And look at this dial, it's so nice. Like, I love this color. I really like it. So if you want to find some information on the tool, like for example, this uh, Presto tool from Bergeon, you can go down below in, a, in the description. You will find information on tools, oils, but I could not put everything obviously in a video. So if you are looking for, for information, just put a comment down below and uh, I will be more than happy to, to reply. Okay, so I'm just releasing the dial fist screw there and we should be able to lift this beautiful dial, which is actually quite in nice condition for the age of the watch. It doesn't look like it was reprinted. It looks like uh, original and it's very, very nice. And here you can see the Venus sign with the Y88, just removing the hour wheel there and the cannon pinion. That's it. And I can start to disassemble on the other side, the, the chronograph. So first I like to remove the springs to remove the tension that there is in a, in a chronograph mechanism. So that's a pusher, that's a lever that uh, actuates basically the cam. So this is a, a cam operated uh, chronograph and not a, 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 a column wheel, sorry. So basically it's like a bit more, uh, it's like a cheaper version if you want, uh, a less uh, noble version than, uh, than a column wheel chronograph, but obviously it's very effective and uh, it works very well. So I carry on removing the parts on the, on the periphery, on the, on the side. And you see like this small spring there. And basically, like I, I, I said in many videos that I've done on chronograph, every time I replace the screws. And you see, for example, the screws that I just removed, it has a shoulder underneath, a bit of rust there, which is weird. Like movement looks good, but there's a tiny bit of rust underneath. So it, Probably some moisture went into the mechanism at some point, so we try to remove as much as possible of this uh, of this rust. That's a cam with the hammer integrated in one part, and we have one of the last spring there. So every time I replace the screw, because uh, like I said, each screw is different. So just to make sure I don't mix them, I place them back on the mechanism. Okay, now I'm removing this wheel that which is driving the minute wheel. And we have the chronograph bridge here with the two jewels, holding the chronograph uh, center wheel and the minute wheel from the chronograph, which is the one on the right on this shot there. There we go. 
minute wheel and the chronograph center wheel, perfect. And we have this little spring there underneath, go underneath the chronograph wheel, and I just need to remove. Okay, so remove all the parts from the chronograph. So now we have like this small bridge I go on the top, which I will just lift with my uh, tweezers. There we go. And underneath, we have like a, a standard design. Now, now if you want, we have a mechanism uh, like can keep the time perfectly, but without the uh, chronograph complication. So I'm just releasing the power there, which is stored in a mainspring by holding the click gently and uh, crown in my hand. There is one more part. That's a wheel that's driving the chronograph that I just removed. We see it's uh, friction mounted. So again, that you have a, a special uh, presto tool to remove this wheel and uh, remove the ratchet and the crown, crown wheel. And this is a crown wheel. It doesn't want to come there. It's... Normally you can lift it very easily, but it's turning, but it's very, like it's uh, stuck. Like it's, uh, it looks like it's uh, glued to the plate. Okay, we're gonna lift it another way. I'm uh, going to use another tool. Yeah, it's rotating, you see, it's moving, but I cannot lift it. So I'm gonna use one of my uh, one of my um, set to to lift uh, hand on uh, on the dial and try to lift the part from underneath. See what it does. Oof! And you see it jumped like so. Yeah, it was something maybe some dried up oil or grease underneath holding the parts or maybe the moist. Like you see, like there is some rust underneath. Um, so yeah, but it came out. Obviously, like all the parts, like we did, like we do on all this restoration. Each single part we go into my cleaning machine just to make sure to remove any residue. So you see, for example, some surface has some uh, rust surface. Um, yeah, and any uh, dried up oil or grease. Remove the balance, which is very fragile. Like I like to remove uh, earlier than, uh, than this, but yeah. Okay. You see some rust as well there on a, on a pallet for cock. That's, uh, that's very strange, yeah. Again, rust here, you see on this screw. Try to remove as much, like I said, during the cleaning uh, screening process. And uh, now we can remove this big plate, kept in place with the three screws. And we should have underneath the rest of the train of wheel and the barrel assembly. So we're gonna as well disassemble the barrel assembly later on. Okay, just lifting up gently there with my tweezers. Here we go. Oh, what's this? Like, you see the green? Under the, that's weird, yeah? Looks like some grease, yeah? Why, why? Why did you put grease there? I don't understand. Just try to remove it a bit with Rodico. And uh, obviously the rest will be cleaned up in a, in a washing machine. Okay, so we move on, uh, on the keyless work on the dial side. Just remove there the setting lever spring, which is kept in place with these two screws. And basically underneath, we have a pretty standard uh, keyless work with the spring, yeah, from for the yoke, which is very tight. You see, I keep it in place always with my uh, Orotech tool there with the plastic uh, plastic hand. And with my tweezers, I will just lift it. There we go. Perfect. Now I take the yoke and I'm just releasing, releasing the setting lever there. There we go. And the last few parts. And basically now we have the movement which is fully disassembled and we'll clean all this part a bit later on. But first we have a couple of steps. First, we're going to remove the jewels there. As well, I will clean them individually in a, in a washing machine. And I'm just going to peg the jewel hole there just to remove um, the oil and grease, just to make it loose. It will be easier when I clean it into the, into the machine. And placing back the balance because that's the safest place I always say to, to keep it during cleaning. See, so a bit more difficult just, just trying to center it just to make sure don't ruin the, the balance stuff because that's a quite a tricky process to change. And when it's in place, just secure it with the screw. There we go. Okay, so the balance has, uh, sorry, the mainspring, the barrel assembly. Going to remove the barrel arbor in the middle. If you want to come, yeah, this is quite tight. Just gently move, rocking away left and right. If you want to disengage from the loop, like in the spring, there we go. That's it. 
And now I'm just taking out the spring. Just take the first couple of uh, wine with my uh, tweezers and the rest I will do it by hand. You see rotating left and right. And you see the spring, the color is uh, different compared to the, the spring that you see like on modern watches, like the steel spring. And this is a, a old one. And you see the way it's wine as well. It's, uh, the shape is very different. So I will replace because I don't really like this type of uh, old spring there. Or you see the one that they do now are a bit more efficient. And uh, this will help maybe for the, for the amplitude. Okay, so I'm placing all the parts in the baskets. And like I said, all of them, we go into the cleaning machine to be fully, uh, fully clean and fully rinsed. And uh, finally, the last step will be drawing the parts before we put them back together. Perfect. Okay, so during the cleaning, I would like to use this opportunity to thank my patron and to tell you that I have a patron page. Um, so yeah, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can go on my patron page. We'll find the link down below and support me. You will have a, a few benefits. So you will get your name in a, in a video. And uh, as well, you will have an early access to the video compared to, to YouTube. So I would like to thank my uh, current patron, which is Jan, Rune, Christian, Corne, Alan, Swami, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting me. I would have never imagined have so many people following me and supporting me on my channel. This helped me, obviously, to, to do better content. So if you want to support me and have access to this early video and video without a commercial, you can go on my Patreon and subscribe to one of the plans. So thanks in advance. Okay, so now the parts are clean, rinsed, and uh, fully dry. So we should be ready to, to put the watch back together. First, like I said, I will put a new mainspring. So you see this mainspring is coming in this uh, blue disc there. So the color always go on the top. And now I'm going to insert it in place. And you see some residue there. That's not good. So I'm going to remove that with a bit of Rodico because you don't want to leave any residue into your barrel assembly. Just, here we go, grabbing everything, everything out. Going to lubricate like the holes, we're going to put uh, back the barrel arbor. It's easier to put it back than to remove it, to be fair. And now we're going to close the lid on the top. And again, I'm going to use this little tool from Orotech just to close the barrel, which is very handy, very simple, but very handy. And here we go, the barrel assembly is ready. So to thank you with all the support you are giving me on the channel, I will do a, a simple giveaway with this beautiful Longines that I restored on the channel. Uh, I will do the giveaway on the 26th of December, so you will describe the winner. And for this, you have three simple steps. First, you need to like the video. You need to be a subscriber, obviously, to the channel. And you need to put a comment down below why you love so much vintage watches. So thanks for participating and good luck in this giveaway. Okay, so we are going to start working on, uh, on the movement. The next step will be to oil the jewel for the balance assembly. So on this uh, old balance, you see there is no shock spring on the top. So I cannot uh, remove the shock like uh, the spring and I get access to the jewel. So I have to disassemble the balance, uh, the balance cock. So you see it's done by releasing the balance wheel and uh, unscrewing the two screws below. And now basically I have access to this jewel, which I'm going to treat in epilam. So that's the uh, epilam treatment is done on a uh, on few parts there. Um, obviously it was as well cleaned before and after treating the parts in epilam I will dry them and I will re-oil the jewel and actually I quite like this uh, this uh, old style obviously it's not safe because you don't have the shock setting so like yeah, if you have a, a big shock on your watch you can uh, break the balance staff of your balance assembly so that's why they invented obviously the, the shock setting but I found quite quite uh, nice to re-oil this, uh, this system. So you see now it's fully clean, treated in epilam, like I said. I'm just going to reassemble it by placing uh, the different parts and securing them with these two tiny screws. They are so small. Look at my fingers compared to these screws here. Yeah? It's so, so small. There we go. Now it's in place. And to oil them, basically, I just use my automatic oiler. So you have a drop of oil going straight into the center. Nice and simple, and you are sure that you have the proper amount of oil, obviously, and at the right place. And the last step would be to reassemble the, put back the balance wheel with the hairspring, securing the couple of screws there, and that's it, it's done. 
Same way on the other side. This one was as well treated in Epilam. Just put the screw back on it to make sure it secures this uh, top jewel in place. And on, a, on the other side, with my automatic oiler, I'm just going to put a drop of oil and that's it, it's done. Okay, so now it's done. We are going to carry on the assembly on the main plate. First, by placing the main spring assembly. Placing the screw there. You see the screw as a shoulder, so I need to put it before I put the plate later on, or else I will not be able to fit it. Just going to put the wheels from the train of wheel, placing them in their jewels. There we go. And when it's done, just put this big plate on the top and align the couple of wheels that go, it's actually three pivot points, you see. You have the barrel, the center wheel, which goes, and the next wheel that go as well in the jewel. There, there's only one jewel on this, uh, on this plate. So when everything is aligned, just secure it with the screw. And we can carry on the assembly. There is another bridge there, which uh, is uh, pretty simple. You see, you only have two wheels. So you have this extended pivot. You see, this pivot is much longer than, uh, than the jewel there, than the jewel hole. And this is where we're going to put the chronograph uh, driving wheel a bit later on, which is friction mounted, you remember? The one that I removed with the Presto tool. So it goes on this uh, pivot pointer, which is very long. Okay, and when it's in place, I put the screw. Just remove one screw there, and you see, it's turning, when it's turning, it means it's in place. So just remove one screw to have access to this one to secure everything in place. Okay, always oiling and greasing all the different uh, points which uh, see some friction, very important. So again, if you want to see some uh, oils that I'm using, it's in the description. You will have different type of uh, oil on a watch, you will have diff different viscosity for different purposes. Now putting the click, again, oiling the pivot point for the click. And there we go, now it goes in place. When it is, you can secure it with the little screws that go on top of it. Okay, so you see on this part, basically it's pretty standard. Like if you if you buy a, a movement or if you work on, a, well, let's say an ETA or whatever movement, which is a, a three hand movement without any complication, you will have more or less exactly the same parts. It will be, maybe you will have some uh, slight differences in design. But the mechanism will be the same. You will have a ratchet, uh, um, like now a crown wheel. The crown wheel can be a different design with one screw in the middle. It can be one piece, can be two pieces, like uh, like this one. But the the mechanism, the if you want, the, the principle will be the same. Um, and like I said, when I disassemble, if you want to keep this watch uh, just as a three hand movement, like to to keep time, you just need to assemble still a couple of parts, and you will have a, a standard movement. But obviously, after on top of it, on top of it. We are going to put the chronograph, uh, chronograph parts for the chronograph complication. And this is where it gets interesting, interesting after. Okay, so now I do the keyless work. You see me putting the blue grease, which is like a heavy viscosity for parts that see a lot of friction. I'm oiling all the pivot points there, you see, with a drop of oil. Putting again the blue grease in the middle there, where we're going to put, you see, the yoke that go in the middle of the clutch. the contact point there. And now I'm going to put the tension in this mechanism with the yoke spring. Keep it in place with the tool. And there we go. I push it in place. That's it. OK, just uh, going to put a cannon pinion, friction mounted there, a couple of uh, intermediate wheel. And we're going to finish with the minute wheel that go last. So we just move, I just put it back in place. Make sure it's aligned in between the teeth. And that's it, that's the last part. We're going to keep everything safe in place. We're not going to put the, the two little screws. These screws are very small as well. Not as small as the one we had on the, on the balance assembly, but they are, they are pretty small like, compared to uh, the standard, let's say, that we have for screws. And all the screws are small anyway on a, on the, on the watch movements, but this one are even smaller than the, than the norm. Okay, just put arming the spring. That's it, perfect. And just checking if it's working. Yeah, 
everything is turning. When I pull on it, we have the two position there. Perfect. Just going to oil the jewels. Again, different oil. Some 9104, some 9010, depending on the, depending on the, on the jewel and uh, on the wheel underneath. And now the next step, we can put the pallet fork. Okay, so pallet fork hooks that go on top. And like we did on the wheels, just going to put it in place first as close as possible. I'm just going to nudge it around until it fell. Yep, there we go. You see, sit down there. It just fell in the jewel. So we can secure it and put the screw. Now we know it's in place. Perfect. Just putting a bit of a wine, just a gentle wine on a, on a watch, just to put some tension in the mechanism. And we see the pallet for clicking. So we have the first uh, test, which is successful there. So now I'm going to put the balance and see if the movement want to start, yes or no. Just need to make sure I align it. Oh, ah, no. Yes, uh, no. <laughs> he doesn't want to. I cannot, uh, I need to align it properly. You see the, the hole where you put the screw there. There we go. That looks better. Now I can press it in place. That's it. It's in place. Perfect. We saw he was very eager to start. He wanted to start, but yeah, he was not perfectly aligned. And as soon as this was aligned, yeah, that is now it's beating. Perfect. We have a runner. And I just noticed that the hairspring was not sitting perfectly flat. So it was like in a, in a ball shape. So I just lower down a bit the spring just to make it to have it on one plane. And when it's done, just secure there with the screw. And now we can start assembling the, the chronograph mechanism. So the first step will be this uh, spring there. That go underneath basically that's linked to the pushers yes, to keep the give the tension as well in a, in a pushers when you press on a chronograph. First we have the chronograph plate. Just need uh, that come on a three quarter plate that we put in place before, and this will be uh, the base for some of the part of our chronograph uh, mechanism. There we go. First I'm going to put this uh, little spring. She's really tricky because it's right next to the balance wheel. Don't really like that. Obviously, I can stop the movement as well, but well, I like to let it run for the oil to, to go. And that is it's in place. I will oil this uh, pivot point for the wheel there, which is driving the minute wheel from the chronograph. I will oil as well the shoulder for the, for the, for the screw because it's going to rotate and rock around the shoulder. So we'll have a lot of screws with shoulder on the chronograph and uh, all of them need to be lubricated as well because uh, basically the pivot point is, uh, is a screw, yeah? So you need, you need to have that lubricated properly. Put a spring there, that we keep the tension to this part. And when you say tension, you say friction. So you need to use this uh, heavy grease there just to make sure the action is smooth and the part don't wear too much between, uh, between each other. Okay, now I'm placing the wheels for the chronograph mechanism and you see the action of the spring that I just fitted first underneath. And okay, now we have this balance, this uh, plate there that gone uh, on top. That's it. It's in place. We have the two wheels in there, jewels. That's the spring that uh, for the minute jump, if you want on a chronograph to index a minute. When you have on your minutes sub uh, sub uh, sub disc on 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 your dial, there we go. It's in place. That can be adjusted as well. A lot of uh, stuff can be adjusted on a chronograph. That's what's nice about the chronograph as well. It's a bit more tricky to set up than a, than a standard part. And uh, yeah, okay. Placing this part, just again lubricating the screw. And you see this screw has three lines on top. So which means it's river threaded. And you see now I'm uh, putting in place by turning the wrong way around if you want, but that's normal on this type of screws. And a way to, to tell you that uh, a river threaded screw is uh, this three line on the top. When you see a, a screw with three line, this means it's uh, river threaded. There we go now, just putting a drop of oil in this fork there on the screw and I'm going to grab 
this uh, arm there, I'm just going to align in this fork. I need to be aligned with the hole where I'm going to put the screw a bit later on. There we go. And I'm going to screw that in place. And after, I will be able to release the part. Oiling like that's the point that will come in contact with the cam and that will activate the cam and make the chrono start or stop or reset. I'm oiling the cam so that you see me oiling only one side of the cam. So the cam is the part that when the hammer is going to hit, um, it's going to reset the chronograph to zero. So this is very important that it's uh, nicely lubricated. And uh, now I'm putting the brain of the chronograph, which is a cam where tell the different position and will make all the part move for the chronograph mechanism. Like I said, to start it, stop it, or reset it. Okay, putting this long spring there. So just put it in place first. We're going to secure it with the screw. And uh, later on, we are going to arm it. So that's the spring that's going to come to index the cam in position. Just putting some grease there just to make sure again. And let's check. You see the arm? Up, down, up, down. And that's making the hammer move and the chronograph a bit later move just to st start and stop the chronograph. And if I push the other button, it will be the reset function. So you will have the hammer hitting the hearts of the chronograph wheels and the wheels will come to zero. Look, tack, and you see the wheel moved and it rests on a flat bit of the, of the hearts and that's how you, you reset the chronograph always at the same time. So just checking that the wheel was spinning. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks good, it was spinning properly. So that's a clutch. That's a part that will uh, engage or disengage the chronograph, so to make it run or to make it stop. Putting the screw there. Oiling, like we oiled the bottom, now we'll oil the top. Putting some grease again, like in a contact with the cam. And you remember this wheel that we removed with the Presto tool there, which is friction mounted. So I'm going to press it in place as it is friction mounted. There, that's it. And the heights need to be perfectly aligned. Okay, so now that the uh, movement is, uh, is assembled, we are going to focus on a case. I like the glass because the glass is, uh, you see, you don't have a step. So we try to polish and keep this glass. We're going to remove all the parts from the chronograph case. So removing the pushers, which are kept in place with this uh, kind of spring inside. You see, you have a spring inside a groove. So I'm going to remove it there. So that's the spring. And I'm just removing the pusher if you want to come out. Quite dirty. So first we're going to do, we're going to put all these parts in an ultrasonic machine just to remove as, many, as much dirt. There we go. And the plating, I'm going to replate. I decided to replate the, the case. So what we're going to do first is going to do a polish on, uh, on the case to remove um, the gold plating, which is we saw is, is faded, yeah? so it's not looking very nice. So I'm going to do a gentle polish until I remove fully the, the gold plating on, the, on this case. I'm going to do the same thing on a bezel as well, obviously, because uh, the bezel is gold plated. You see me removing like I'm polishing the lug. This is the final step. I'm uh, going to do like now, basically I do a polish because if you want to do a gold plating, you want to do it on the finished surface, which is uh, when it's uh, fully shiny. So I'm going to do a polish, like a, a final polish on all the parts. And after these parts will go into, the, into my little setup to be uh, gold plated. Okay, so I do the same on the bezel and on the case, just to make sure everything is polished, is as crisp as possible. And in between each step, I put all the parts again into my ultrasonic machine to remove any residue from the polishing. And the last step of polishing actually is the case back which was a grain, you remember? It was, it was a scratch, but the finish was a grainy with line. So I use this special wheel to give it a matte finish uh, with, uh, with, uh, with lines. And you see me doing the line, and you will see at the end the final result on, uh, on the case back. Okay, so I put the parts in this uh, degreaser before I put them in uh, for, for gold plating. And while I leave them, I just did, like I said, I will repolish original glass because I quite like the shape, which is not without a step, which is not too high, and uh, I found it looking very nice on, the, on this case and on this watch. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna plug, like I put the case in a solution, in gold plating solution, and I'm just gonna put a current through it. And you see now some bubbling coming out, which is mean like the gold plating process started. And we'll see a bit later on, I keep it as a surprise when the watch is finished, uh, the kind of uh, finish we got on, uh, on this beautiful chronograph. Okay, I will reassemble the spring. You remember with the pushers that I just uh, removed. So I place it back in place and already you can see some glimpse of the, of the case with the new gold plating. Usually it's not clean there. I have some finger marks mark on it, but it looks so nice. I'm very happy with this uh, gold plating. Just gonna put back the crystal in a bezel, which is very easy to put on this thin bezel. You can put it by hand, you feel clicks. You don't need a press most of the time to put it. And the movement, which is, uh, like I said, it was finished. Just going to put it back in the case, which is a bit tricky. We put the dial a bit later on. So we go just try to put now the winding stem there. Fully in position. That's it. Okay, we're gonna secure it, remember, with the screws that we just removed. That's the first step actually we did when we disassemble the movement. We just removed the screws. So now we're gonna put these two screws back to keep the movement in the case. And we're gonna secure the winding stem in position as well. And we can reassemble the last couple of parts, which is our wheel with this uh, spring. And we can put back this beautiful dial. So nice, so nice. She's not centered there, probably not in a dive fit hole. That's it. Yes, perfect. And press it in position. I will obviously screw down the dive fit hole. Just a gentle clean to remove any uh, dirt on the, on the dial. And I can refit the hands. So let's start by the our hand. Obviously on a chronograph, you will have a few more hands than uh, usual. Just a line to midnight. And we're gonna do the same thing with the minute end. Just put it in place. I'm gonna line it as close as possible to midnight. Just gently with my carbon tweezer tips there from our tech. Just press it in place. That's it. And see if the hands are aligned. I'm gonna check at six o'clock. Yeah, look at hour and the minute end. Perfect. The hour is on six, the minute is on 12. That's good. That's a Second, the running second. So that's not from the chronograph, that's from the time. It's always run, never stop. Just press it in place. We have this beautiful red end, chronograph, uh, chronograph ends, which is so nice. That's it. And the last one, which is a minute end from the chronograph. I'm just going to align and I'm going to press it in place like the other one as well. Okay, so that's it, hand in place a gentle blow on a, on a chronograph and we can fit back the crystal with the bezel and the case back and just going to close it by hand by pressing on it, you feel it click. And that's it, this means the watch is fully closed. That's it. And look at this, look at this beautiful gold plating. I'm really pleased with the hand result on this, uh, on the case and uh, as well on the case back. Like you remember, I did this finish. Look at this beautiful grain finish on a, on a case back. So nice, so nice, so, so nice. Really love this watch, really love this watch. Now with this beautiful dial, we have a beautiful case. And uh, on a time grapher, actually, I'm not really, really pleased. I probably will have to do a couple more steps. Uh, the amplitude, I, I would like to have it at least 20 degrees higher than that. So I saw the mainspring barrel was quite scratched, so probably I will change the mainspring barrel. And the rate, I can adjust it, but it's not bad for the rate. The bit error is around one, which is uh, not too bad as well. And look at this beauty with the, this newly uh, uh, replated uh, case. And on my rust, yeah, it looks so nice. So hope you like the video, and I see you next time for my next project. Bye-bye.